This is the fourth part of Amazon EKS tutorial. In this section, we'll cover horizontal pod autoscaler and required components that you need to install to make it work. Usually, we would use CPU usage or memory usage metrics to decide when we need to scale up our application. The important part here is that when you create a deployment or stateful set, you must have the resource block defined. HPA will use a requests section to calculate CPU or memory usage of the pod not the limits. So if you forget to define resources, your HPA object won't work and if you describe it, you'll see unknown for the target. Also, we frequently use GitOps tools such as FlaxCD or ArgoCD that will continuously compare the state of Kubernetes objects with what you have defined in the Git repository. For this reason, you should never use replica property on the deployment or stateful set because you'll get a race condition. For for example, Argo CD will keep applying one replica and horizontal pod autoscaler will keep scaling this to five. Also, to target deployment, in this case, we use a name property, not any labels. Now, if you want to use custom metrics, for example, the number of requests per second, you would need additional component and I have another tutorial covering this. To use autoscaler, you need some metrics. We usually deploy a metrics server that would scrape each kubelet and publish those metrics to the metrics.kates.io Kubernetes API. This component rarely needs any maintenance, so it's safe to use Helm chart to deploy it and forget about it. Also, I'll cover the common pattern to initialize any Terraform provider that needs access to Kubernetes, such as Helm, Kubernetes, CTL or Kubernetes Terraform providers. First of all, we need to deploy metrics server. For this example, I decided to use Helm and show you how you can initialize Helm provider and deploy any Helm chart to EKS. I'll be using a very common pattern of using data resources to authorize Helm provider. You may see this in many examples. The data resource will also wait until EKS is provisioned. So it's safe to run everything together. To initialize Helm provider, we either use auth token directly, which is in my opinion, the most convenient approach, or you can use exec and execute a command to get that token. In the second case, you have to install AdBS CLI on the machine where you would want to run Terraform. In the first case, it's not necessary. And if you create a module, you would want to initialize providers in the environment folder, not in the module itself. Now, this is the Helm release resource provided by the Helm Terraform provider. It's very similar to the Helm CLI command that you would run, except you don't create aliases for the Helm repositories, you use them directly. Also, there are a couple of ways to override variables. You can override individual variables using the set block, or you can provide a YAML file with all variables. Additionally, you can use Terraform template built-in function to create YAML template and override some variables in there if you need to dynamically obtain anything. For example, AdBS account number or I am role I ran, stuff like that. And finally, let's explicitly depend on the node group. Otherwise, Helm may time out and fail. Next, we need to create metrics server variables that we want to provide or override. It's going to be under values folder. Now, most of it is default. Just make sure that you're using the correct port for scraping metrics. Also, in the future, you may want to adjust resolution. Unlikely, but possible. All right, since we're using a new Helm provider, we need to reinitialize Terraform. Next, let's go ahead and apply it. Let's check if the metric server is up and running. You can also try to fetch some logs and make sure that there are no errors. This especially needs to be checked if you're using COPS to provision Kubernetes cluster. I don't see any errors, so we can continue. And of course, the most important check is to try to get metrics by using top pods or top nodes command. 
you may see a message like metrics are not available yet for the first minute or so. If you don't see CPU and memory usage of ports, you will want to carefully check the metrics server logs. At this point, we have verified that metrics are present. Let's go ahead and deploy our example. Now, make sure that your deployment has a resource block and especially check that the requests section, because the horizontal pod autoscaler will use that part, not the limits, to calculate usage in percentage. Next, we have the service object to be able to generate some artificial load. And finally, we have HPA object itself. Make sure you're using the same namespace. To target deployment, we use name property and not label. Also, set the minimum and maximum number of pods. We can use CPU utilization or memory utilization in percentage. For example, in this case, we want to scale our application if CPU exceeds 80% or memory exceeds 70%. If you want to use custom metrics, I have a dedicated tutorial explaining how to do it. For example, if the application exceeds 100 requests per second, we want to scale it up or any other custom metrics besides CPU and memory utilization. Let's go ahead and apply it. Check if the sample application is running. Check the HPA object. Keep in mind that if you forget to define the resource block on the deployment object, HPA target will keep showing unknown. In our case, it just needs a few seconds to collect metrics for that pod. We have 15 seconds metric resolution configured on the metric server, if you remember. Next, we need to get the service name and port forward our application to test it. All right, let's send a request to generate a Fibonacci number, which is a CPU intensive task. It will force our application to hit the HPA target of 80%. You can see that the second port was created to handle the load. Horizontal pod autoscaler will also scale it down after 5 or 10 minutes if there is no load. That parameter is also configurable. And at the end, don't forget to delete that example namespace with the deployment and HPA. That's all for this section. Next, we'll compare three different approaches that you can use to authorize your application to access AWS services. We'll compare port identities with port OpenID Connect provider and IAM roles for nodes.